What's going on guys? This is Burris. I have a knife review here for you today. This is the Cold Steel Tall War. This is the four inch variety. They also have a five and a half inch variety. Now I've been using this knife for the past few months um, off and on. And I found some you know, interesting things about it as far as at least how I uh, like to use it and what I think the uses are for, what I think can be improved upon, and the high points. And for this use, you know, four inch blade, that's an everyday carry size for most people. You know, it's gonna be in the same category as like a Recon 1, uh, which I previously reviewed, or even like this Bad Monkey by uh, Southern Grind, which I previously reviewed. It's more so comparable to the Recon 1 than any other knife as far as the Cold Steel line that I have. Um, I've used this for years now. Um, if we open these up, you can kind of see that as far as the length, blade width, and um, you know, just overall length, they're very similar knives. You know, Cold Steel always has a very ergonomic design to their handles. It, your hand's usually always locked into the, the handle, you know, as far as the ridges and, and stuff like that. You can see, you, know, you grab this Recon 1, you know, your hand locks into it very nicely. You know, the same goes for, um, you know, this Tall War series. You can see that your hand locks into it very nicely. And, uh, you know, there's no moving around or anything like that. So even if this wasn't, you know, really texturized G10, your hand probably wouldn't move around very much anyhow, just based off, you know, the really good design of the handle. And as far as the, you know, grippiness of the G10, you know, it's very comparable. I think it's actually identical to what the Recon 1 is. It's extremely, you know, when you get this G10 from Cold Steel, it's going to be extremely grippy. It's going to be very, you know, rough. And that's what you want in a, you know, at least in my opinion, that's what you want in a knife handle material. You don't want to have it super slippery, etc. Now on the top here, you can see the ridges. You can see, you know, it kind of curves over. There's a nice round top to it on the sides, which is nice. You don't have that texturizing on the top where you're going to get hot spots and you know, you're going to have some uh, issues if you're using it a lot. So I like the fact that they, you know, really have this rounded off at the top. As far as, you know, people call it jimping or I call it serrations, as far as that goes, you know, it's kind of, these are more index points than anything else. This really isn't jimping as far as, you know, you're going to lock your, your finger into it. Um, you know, it's more just to let you know where you're at on the blade. Um, you know, they could improve on that as far as moving this up a little bit and a little bit smaller uh, serrations up here, uh, making it a little bit more aggressive. I'll give you a close up of that right there. They can make that a little bit more, you know, aggressive in my opinion, if they want to do that. Um, but it's nothing that's really going to change the, the recommendation or anything like that on my side of it, because I don't really see, you know, a super need for, uh, you know, super aggressive serrations on the top there. You can kind of see, you know, on the Recon 1 here, they have something similar. I've used this knife, you know, a lot. Uh, over the last uh, few years and you know it, I've never really noticed an issue by having these which are actually smaller um, on this knife so like I said I don't think serrations on the top there are a huge deal. As far as the specifics on this blade you're looking at a four inch uh, blade length. The blade thickness you're looking at four millimeters um, and we can talk about that a little bit later as far as the way this blade is shaped. Um, but the overall length is nine and a quarter inches and the weight on this tower four inch is five ounces. So you're looking at a, you know, a, something that's going to be around, you know, on the high end of what some people recommend as far as the, the weight goes. Um, I have no problem carrying a little bit of weight, you know, this bad monkey, um, the one I have on me right now is a boker which i previously reviewed this is 5.4 ounces um you know i don't really have a problem carrying a little bit of weight as long as what it has with it is um you know something of an advantage and to this as far as the advantage goes it's just a large blade it's wide it's four inches um it also has this deployment mechanism which is kind of like an emerson uh, wave feature although it's not and uh, we can talk about that a little bit later but as far as carrying it every day you know it's a really good blade to uh, carry every day if you're looking for that the one thing i will say is i think deployment of it is lacking somewhat um and maybe it's because i have you know, i don't have these super huge you know football player hands i got just average hands and something like um i guess i'll use this as an example so you can see on the recon one where this this uh, thumb stud sits and you know deploying it is rather easy because you have you know, it's close to where your thumb would be to deploy it and the arch to get to the top, you know, is, is rather short. When you look at something like the towel war, you know, where my thumb would be here, I have to actually move it out. And then to push it up, you have to go up and around 
the front of the blade. So as far as deploying it in a thumb stud type way, you know, with whipping it out, um, I don't think that's the best way to deploy this. The best, best way to use this, and it's kind of the way they designed it, is actually to use this wave function, and it works really well. And what that would be is using it uh, tipped down, and when you pull it out, this catches on your pocket um, on the way out, and as it comes up, it's going to wave out and open, and then come into your hand, and uh, you'll be ready to use it. Um, I've always had trouble with this knife as far as deploying it in this manner, just for the fact of the angle and, and amount of uh, you know room needed to deploy this versus something like the Recon 1. Um, and you can kind of see close up the difference in how close the thumb studs are to where your thumb would be. Um, as you can see there, you know it's a big difference um, in the actual length from thumb to thumb stud um, or disc in this case. So you can kind of see the differences there. And you know, is that a huge deal? Not really, just use it in you know, the preferred manner, which I believe is like this wave function. Um, and you know, I haven't had any problems with that. You can see it's rather wide. So as far as you, having that get caught on your, uh, your pants, I've had zero problems using it in that manner. So I would definitely recommend that being the way that you want to deploy the knife. As far as what else is going on with the knife, you have the ability to flip over sides with the uh, pocket clip. Uh, you have the triad lock, which is one of the strongest ones on the market. Um, you know, it's basically a lock back. You should have zero issues and zero reservations about using this in a, in a hardcore situation and worrying about it coming closed. Um, I've had zero problems with, um, I had two previous, um, this is the only one I have on the table, it's cold steel, but I've had two previous triad locks. They're bomb proof, never had a problem with them, totally recommend them. As far as the handle goes, you, all you have is G10, there's no liners or anything like that, and honestly, it's really not needed. And as we make our way back here to the blade, you can see it's rather wide. They have this on the top here. You can see it's thin through here and then thick out through the, um, the tip. You can see that that tip is definitely not super thin. Um, compared to some other ones that are on the market. What comes to mind is uh, this Boker. You can kind of look at the difference between those two. You can see that the uh, cold steel is definitely thicker towards the tip. So I will have no reservations about using this, you know, to pry and to, uh, you know, use it in a hardcore manner whatsoever. Cold Steel is known for that. That's why they, you know, that's why they have the video promotions they do for their knives where they really grind on these and they, they jam it in a, you know, um, what they call it, uh, car hoods and all kinds of stuff and twist them around and you don't see any issues. Um, and that's the understanding I have and what I've seen with my cold steel knives. They are, you know, the, the bomb proof knives uh, that are on the market and the price point of them is always good. You know, the price on this one's gonna run you around 60 to $70 for the four inch uh, option. You know, the steel they're using is actually uh, something that's newer to knife making. Uh, what it is is a Carpenter CTS XHP alloy. And you know, it's very comparable to, I believe, uh, S30V steel. You know, it's gonna be very wear resistant. As far as sharpening it, I've sharpened this one time and um, haven't any problems with it. So, you know, it's decent to sharpen. Um, it stays rather, rather wear resistant. I haven't had any problems with, you know, I left it outside for a few nights just to see if it would, you know, have some sort of rust on it or anything like that. Uh, didn't see anything uh, along those lines. So you're gonna get definitely a, a great blade for the money, for the 60 to $70 range. You're gonna get an exceptional uh, blade material as well. You know, the reason I have this, you know, after using it for a little bit, um, I'm not a fan of using this every day. And that's simply just for the fact of how it opens um, and using it. I mean, this is the way I like to deploy my, my knife is with the, uh, the thumb stud or thumb disc. And just for me, it doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't work very well. So in this case, you know, the reason that I would have this and keep this would be just simply for the fact that I do like the blade shape. It's of that kind of Persian, uh, Indian heritage, you know, back in the day, as far as swords go, and they've kind of adapted it to this. Um, it's a very, you know, usable knife as far as everything but using it in like a bushcraft scenario. So, you know, slicing, um, you know, slashing, all those types of, um, you know, movements is, is very good for this. You have a huge belly on this knife, um, as you can see right here. So, as far as using it every day, I wouldn't see any problem with that. I mean, opening boxes, all that stuff. You know, I, I always laugh at people who are like, yeah, this opens boxes really well. Well, no shit, it's a knife. It, any piece of steel that's sharpened is gonna open a box pretty well. But using this actually, you know, to, um, you know, using all meat, 
uh, using it to um, you know prepare stuff and food. Um, I don't see any problem with it whatsoever. So um, you know I think it's a good option for that. Uh, just for me, it's not an everyday carry knife. Um, but other than that, you know it's definitely a cool looking knife. It's definitely something that's gonna strike up some conversation just simply on that awesome blade shape and, and that's why I like it. So if you guys have any questions or anything, go ahead and let me know. If you guys have a cold steel uh, towel war knife, go ahead and put it in the comments down below or better yet, make a video about it. And until next time, later. But as far as the actual, you know, uses, using, but, but as far as actually using the blade um, and using it in a 